this sediment core and we'll slice it. And the first and most important thing that we need to know for each slice is how old is it? And we can determine that. We take the sediments out, we dry them, and we use radioisotopes. And in the case of this laboratory, we measure gamma ray emitting radioisotopes, things like cesium-137. And cesium-137 is a marker for the year 1963 because it was released by above-ground nuclear bomb testing, which was banned in 1963. And so the maximum that we see in cesium generally coincides with that time period, 1963-1964. We also use other radioisotopes like beryllium-10 and lead-210 to either reconstruct dating or determine where the sediment came from. So once we've determined how old a particular interval is, we might ask a question like, in this interval, where did the sediment come from? And using other radioisotopes or other tracers, sometimes lead, which used to be an additive in gasoline and was removed in the 1970s, the amount of lead can also tell us where the sediments came from. We'll determine did that sediment, in the case of something like Lake Pepin or this drainage ditch, the core that I had, we'll determine if it was eroded from a field or from a bluff or stream bank. And this, the simplest way that we do that is things like fields, which get rained on, received cesium and lead to 10. Things like a bluff and a stream bank, which really don't get rained on, don't have those radioisotopes. So in some cases, simply the presence and absence of a radioisotope tells us where the sediment came from. It's usually not that simple. We have to do some math, do multiple tracers, and piece it all together. But we can, we can use that core then to both determine the rate and the amount that sediment has accumulated over time, and by using the radioisotopes, where the sediment came from. And of course, each slice is also useful for things like phosphorus, nitrogen, the amount of algae eutrophication that's in the lake. And in the case of Pepin, where it's receiving inputs from an urban environment also, mercury, heavy metals, and, and now other uh, contaminants like dioxin and triclosan 